from 1872 to the 1890s. It was a wonderful success story, uh, one of the great success stories of the banks of the world in that period, the speed with which it grew, the areas in which it had a big interest, the industries it was really financing. He was somebody who uh, built up an empire, ran it himself, uh, made as many decisions as possible, didn't tell the board of decisions if he thought uh, they might disapprove. So he became the Queensland National Bank. The QN was hit severely by the financial depression of the 1890s. It was in no way prepared for it. Uh, it had uh, too many deposits that were short term and too many of its loans were long term. Uh, its, um, its board obviously didn't have control of its general manager, so the crash of the QN, such a huge and important institution, was a devastating blow for Queensland. In the first half of 1893 is the worst half year in Queensland's recorded history. Well, Drury and McElrath, uh, as far as we know, were business partners. There was a lot, this little team immensely powerful in Queensland. Uh, I'm not sure whether McElrath died a rich man because so many of his investments were bad, but McElrath's an interesting example of somebody who was, uh, I think, a very good minister in the boom times. Uh, Queensland spent too much, but how can you develop a huge area without borrowing money on a large scale for railways and so forth? I think uh, Queensland owes him a, a great debt, but in his private speculations, uh, he was nowhere near as successful as he should have been. and. Uh, they did great harm to the bank and of course they involved Drury in activities that he as CEO should have had no part in whatsoever. He had to negotiate with the Queensland Government a, a deal whereby they would keep their money in the bank uh, for as long as possible because if they withdrew it the bank would be insolvent again. In 1918, that's after 22 years, that he paid off the final debts of the bank. But one of the difficulties of the bank was that uh, it had lent money to many sheep and cattle stations which had no hope whatsoever of repaying the money. Uh, eventually the bank took over. They had big sugar interests uh, from sugar people who couldn't pay their debts, uh, especially around the Bundaberg area. And uh, they floated them as the Milliquin Sugar Company. He ran Milliquin, he ran the pastoral company, he ran the bank. The districts which had heavily depended on the bank, the sugar and the pastoral industries in bad trouble, they'd been restored. Uh, it's one of the great success stories in the history of Australian banking. The acquisition of QNB in 1948 by, by the National Australia Bank was one of the most significant developments in the history of the National Australia Bank. It gave us a very strong presence in, in Queensland. Uh, it took our market share in business banking and in agri-banking to over 25%. Uh, we acquired um, over 80 branches as a result of acquiring QNB, but we acquired um, the intangible assets of deep knowledge and the passion that the employees of QNB had for the potential of Queensland. When I fast forward to today, we, we still are the largest business bank and the largest bank to the agri-sector in Queensland. We have one of the largest footprints right across Queensland and, and that's due um, to, to the QNB. It's a big part of the QNB legacy. So the QN, uh, which would I suppose be the oldest of the powerful Queensland institutions, the fact that it was taken over by Melbourne would be a great uh, disappointment to the true blue Queenslanders whose hearts stopped ticking once they crossed the southern border. If you ask me why the Queensland National Bank should be in the Hall of Fame, I'd say uh, the main reason is that uh, there were more risks in the economic development of Queensland in the 19th century than they were in the economic development of the two rich states, Victoria and New South Wales. And uh, the Queensland National Bank took more risks than anybody else. The second reason you would put it in is that uh, it gained in Australia, in its own territory, a position of dominance, such as no other bank had gained in its own territory in the 19th century. You know, it was winner in Queensland 
a very large, a very large scale. The pace at which it grew, the, the way every little outpost in Queensland was seen as almost worthy or worthy of a Queensland National Bank branch. It thought on the grand scale. Uh, I think you'd have to say that uh, it would be hard to think of another institution that put more effort into trying to develop a tropical Australia than the Queensland National Bank.